Hello everyone, I hope that you are all safe and well. So in my last video I discussed this exposure ladder and I did plan on talking about both of my exposure ladders but the video would have been extremely long. So today I will be talking about my current exposure ladder. If you haven't seen my last video, please go and check it out. It does explain what exposure ladders are. So if you don't have an awareness of that, it would be really, really helpful in understanding this video. Anyway, I am just going to jump right in and explain this exposure ladder. So this one is targeting me being able to manage my expectations especially in school um and these are expectations of myself and i am someone who gets quite anxious about grades i feel like i have to get an a in everything otherwise i am a failure now this is most specifically in psychology and the reason that it was kind of good for me to split this exposure ladder up with my last exposure ladder in my previous video is because this is one that i am still working on um my cbt one i've got so much better i've seen outcomes this one not so much so far and it's something that is part of my anxiety journey at the moment that i wanted to share with you if you look at this um, exposure ladder, you'll probably notice it is a bit longer than my last one. Exposure ladder lengths can vary depending on the complexity of the anxiety. So whilst my previous one was like a physical anxiety, um, eating in front of people, this anxiety ladder aims to target my actual thought processes. So since this isn't a physical thing that I can do, it's a bit more difficult as it aims to change the way that I think and respond to a situation. So it's a bit deeper than the other one. So my first step was to think about how I would feel if I got below an A. So this is lower than my usual expectations for myself. Stressful for me if I get a B, I'm like, wow, I've dropped, I'm slacking. What have I done to get below? So I need to think about, you know, the emotions I experience if I do get a B. It can be quite useful to write these down somewhere so I can keep looking back on them and practicing this and seeing whether it um, changes. I never really wrote them down. That's something I could work on actually um, upon reflecting on this. Um, the second step is think about what I would do and how I would react if I got a B. So the last one is how I'd feel. This is what I'd literally do. So quite often, if I get a B and I'm upset over it, I make that quite explicit and evident to people, you know. I seem quite annoyed and really that's my stress, that's me being upset with myself, but I don't present that in the most appropriate way at times. Now, the third step on here is probably my favourite. It's think about how other people would react and what they would do if I got a B. So this was more like the broader scheme, people at school. So I thought about what my teacher would do, my psychology teacher. She'd be proud. She probably wouldn't think of anything bad if I got a B. She'd be like, oh, OK, that's good. I thought about my form tutor as well and the two lovely people who sit on a table me in psychology. Um, I'm very, very lucky. We're all very supportive of each other. So it tries to put things in perspective. How do they react when I get um, my grades? They're not angry. They're proud of me. So I should um, replicate these emotions um, towards myself. So number four, the fourth step is think about how the more immediate people around me, the more intimate people around me would react to me getting lower than an A. So I considered my family and my boyfriend and whenever I get a B or anything, they're really, really proud of me. And yeah, it just puts into perspective that everybody around me, there's not a single person who thinks of me any differently from getting below these expectations that I have of myself. Number five is quite a challenging one for me. It's think about the consequences. What is the worst that can happen if I do get a B? And for most people, that would be quite a rational thing to think about, you know, nothing's really going to change. For me, it makes me think quite irrationally. I'm like, oh, um, I won't get into a university I want. And if I can't get into a university I want, that's all my plans out the window. And then I won't be able to get a job. And then I won't be able to have a house when I want. Like, it just really ends up in like a big catastrophe in my mind and that's really not rational and that's not going to happen my results on a random test um like an end of unit one aren't going to determine completely what i get in my a levels so number six is one that i probably should do a bit more often now this is trying exam questions and either making 
small mistakes intentionally and marking them against the mark scheme myself or sending them to my teacher just so that I don't get full marks or anything so I can see a B physically written down and learn to adjust my response to it. Now to me personally I was a bit in two minds about this one because I'm like okay that's not a genuine B I've done that on purpose so my seventh step was try essays I've done before um, or questions I've done before and do them without any of the work in front of me. Now, depending on the task, sometimes we have to do things with our work in front of us. Sometimes we have to do it um, without looking at anything. But obviously, when you don't have notes in front of you, doing exam questions can be a lot more difficult. So um, in by me doing this, it prepares me and makes it a bit more likely that I will get less than an A. So by practicing these without anything, it should make me feel more prepared to get that result and see it and not feel completely disappointed. Some of these last ones are actually really lovely. I do quite like them. I feel like the middle of my lad is a little bit... Mm, <laughs> I don't really know. I might reflect on it a bit more. But it's speak to myself the way I'd speak to other people upon them getting grades. So like I said, I'm part of a really lovely psychology table. It's a nice small one and we're all very encouraging of each other. If they get a grade that they're proud of, or even a grade that they're not so proud of, we're all really encouraging of each other. We're like, that's really great. Even if they got a lower grade than they'd like, but it's still higher than what they got before, we really try to pick out the positives for each other and think, okay, look, you've um, improved. Or if they've got a bit lower, okay, now you know what you need to work on. We're very, you know, positive and uplifting to each other. And it basically, this step on the ladder encourages me to talk to myself the way that my table speaks to one another you know we're always positive and happy for one another's achievements so i should be like that with myself i need to think about the ways that they talk to me when i get my grades and really 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 try and speak to myself in that way as well okay now my ninth step like i said this is quite a long one is reflecting on how i did feel when i got lower grades previously so like i said I am doing A-levels and in GCSEs obviously I did get lower grades than I wanted um, quite a bit throughout the year and it's encouraging and prompting me to think did anything bad happen when I got below my expectations during GCSEs? Well no, <laughs> nothing did. Uh, one of my common worries in sixth form, I mean in GCSEs, was that I wouldn't be able to get into sixth form and I'm in sixth form. I'm completely fine so all of my concerns from GCSEs um, they were irrelevant, they were irrational and it's encouraging me to kind of realise that I'm the same in A-levels. A lot of these anxieties and expectations aren't rational to really be thinking about and the things that I'm really concerned of, like not being able to go to uni, that really isn't going to happen. The tenth step is kind of a brief one. It's um, if I have any mock exams or I've done um, prelims for all of my subjects it's reflecting on all of my grades as a whole um are they good am i happy you know am i happy overall yeah i may not have got the results i want but has this really changed my life no it hasn't now in my um last set of mocks i believe i think there was um i think i may have got a c in one of my subjects and i ignored the fact that i got an a in one of them and i was really really fixated on this c so it's really encouraging me to reflect on all of my grades and not just focus on one specific subject and see getting low in one of them as a complete disaster when I may be doing well in others and if I'm happy in like the work that I'm doing, just really encouraging me to see the bigger picture. And the very last one, this one is really, really lovely. It's praising myself for whatever I get on results day for A-levels and... um praising myself for just grades in general you know even if you don't get a grade you want you should still be proud of yourself because you've still put a lot of work in you know even if I don't get an A in psychology like I want I put in loads of time and dedication into all of my revision and that's something I should be proud of keeping that motivation to keep on going and it's really really important not to be disheartened if you don't get what you want you should just Keep on going, keep on persevering and be proud of yourself that you're doing that and that you're putting the work in. So that is one of my favourite ones and that is one that I'm awful at, <laughs> to be completely honest. And that's one I really, really, really want to try and 
a work on like treating myself for the good things that I've done you know if I've put loads and loads and loads of work in and I haven't got a grade I particularly like I should just go out and buy myself a cake because I put in lots of dedication to that and it's okay to be a bit disappointed but it's really important that you do praise yourself for the good things that you've been able to do and that you see the positives in situations that aren't typically ideal for you so yeah that is about it on all of my exposure ladders I've only done two so far because obviously this one's quite a severe anxiety and I'm not going to start making loads of exposure ladders for all types of anxieties unless I've combated one that I'm focusing on at the moment. So that's one really important thing. Don't start making the several exposure ladders for all different things you're nervous about. Focus on one anxiety in particular, the one that's, you know, most prominent within your life. And once that one's done and you're quite satisfied with the progress in that one, then you can make another one. So, like I said, this is one that I'm really, really, really working on at the moment and I really want to look at it a bit more, to be honest. If I'm being really transparent, I haven't looked at it as much as I should have and actually making these videos has made me a bit more aware of how good it is and how much I should really be paying attention to it. Anyway, I really hope that both this video and my other exposure ladder video has helped you to understand what an exposure ladder is and how to create one yourself they're so easy to do you can maybe google like templates for them online or you could just make a list and draw boxes they're so easy to create yourself if you do have any questions feel free to message me or leave a comment below i will try and find some like online templates for them and link them um, in the description below if you do want to have a go at making your own exposure ladders they are definitely the best technique i have got from cbt in my opinion because they're something that you can keep like recycling and making for all different types of anxieties if you did enjoy watching this video and found things useful in it please leave a like and subscribe i will be making many more videos on cbt techniques or techniques that i personally use in order to help all of you with your anxiety or in terms of supporting a friend with anxiety